was. It was, um, and, it, and it ties into what we're going to talk to talk about today. We're finally going to get really into physics today. All right, here's here's the deal. Say I'm going around a track. I got a 2.5 mile track. Okay, it's 2.5 miles to go around. That's an Indianapolis 500. So basically, they do 200 laps, and it comes out to be 500 miles. All right. They don't do 500 laps for years. I always thought they did 500 laps, but they don't. They, they do 200 laps, usually. Sometimes they do 190, sometimes. But anyway, it's 2.5 miles there at the Brickyard. And let's say they're in qualifying times. First lap is 150 miles an hour. Second lap is 170 miles an hour. Third lap. He's giving it the juice a little bit more, 190 miles an hour. And the last lap, A.J. Foyt is now going 210. I'm dating myself. I don't even know if A.J. Foyt's still alive. But anyway, 210 miles per hour. Okay? Now, what's his average speed? Is it as simple as adding up those four things and dividing by four? People would like it to be, but it's not. It's not. And the reason is because he spends a lot more time getting around the track at two and a half miles. Than he, so he spends more time at 150 miles an hour than he does at 210. So, so it's not a simple thing of just adding those up and dividing by four. Okay. So what we need to do, here's the deal. Average speed... The way we do average speed is like this. And this kind of leads us into chapter 2. Finally, we're going to get to chapter 2. Believe it or not. And we're going to fly through it. All right, average speed, we'll call it, we'll, we'll do it like this. Average with a little bar over it is equal to the total distance. It's equal to the total distance divided by the total time. Aha! Therein lies the rub with this problem. So the first two and a half miles, I've got, so what I have to do is I have to find the time for this guy, the time for this guy, the time for this guy, and the time it takes for that guy. If you are not used to it, you're going to have to get used to it. In physics, we use a lot of these little things which are called subscripts. This means the first time, the second time, T1, T2, T3, T4. We use those a lot. It's just a way of doing mathematical yakking in our code. Those are called subscripts, okay? All right, it's just a, basically the way to number a variable that's going to repeat. But it means something, it might be a different value each time. All right, so here we go. So for T1, well, T1 is equal to the distance divided by the velocity, because doesn't velocity equal distance over time? So to find time, I get VT equals D, so T equals D over V. That was pretty quick. So basically, it's 2.5 over 150. Oh, then T2 is going to be uh, 2.5 over what? 170, and yada, 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 all the way down. To where, well, let's go ahead and fill it in. Let's go ahead and finish it. T3, then it'll be 2.5 over 190. And T4 is equal to uh, 2.5 over 210. So he goes four laps. How many, what's his total distance here? How many miles did he go? 10. But what's his t total time? So he went 10 miles, and then you got to figure out what T1 plus T2 plus T3, plus T4. Now, the million dollar question was asked by a student who's in my office from the other section this morning. She goes, well, how are we supposed to know that? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you were just supposed to kind of think about it for a minute. But after today's lecture, you would have gotten it right away. You'd have been like, oh, average speed is total distance divided by total time. And you would have known that you got to break down the times a little bit. So, so that, the, the, that, was the, that was the problem with that one. Okay, I got a lot of people, a lot of complaints on that one. 
So, oh, not complaint. Well, whining. Okay. All right. Um, but you guys, I didn't. I don't think I got much from you. So. But it was it was a little bit confusing. And I have changed for finally for the third homework assignment. I've changed the grading scheme. I know you had unlimited chances to try it, but if you, it was multiple choice and you missed one, you got zero credit for it. Ouch. That kind of stung a little bit. So I didn't realize I had put that one in there. They had a very punitive type grading scale for mastering physics, and I changed it. I went, it, in other words, if you've got a multiple choice question and there's four choices, you're going to lose 25% for each guess that you did. And then that's kind of fair. So in other words, if it takes you to your third guess to figure out what the right answer is, you get twenty, you get quarter of your points. Yes. So what time Oh, it gives you hours. Yeah, the, your hours because what we're finding is miles per hour. Yeah, yeah, it gives you the hours. You don't have to convert it to seconds or anything like that. You could. But then you'd want to convert that to feet per second, to miles to feet. And so that would be 52,850 feet. Pretty good, right? And that would it be? 5285? How, how many feet are in a mile, crew? 5,280? 285? Something like that. Two, just 280? Okay. 5280. All right. All right, so that's how you do that one. Well, let's talk about, let's go on into chapter two. Let's go on into chapter two and talk about this about 6.15. We'll take a little bit of a break and do a quiz from Mastering Physics. It'll be easy. We'll, you'll, you can work together and everything else. It'll be pandemonium in here, guaranteed. It'll be almost as easy as your first quiz you took in here. All right, what we're going to talk about today, where's my thing? Here it is, projector on. Is, am I getting a, yes, Nirvana. All right, we're going to turn off first two banks. Is that okay? Can we still see? Still see up here? Okay. All right. So away we go. All right, good. I think we almost have 100% attendance. Hold on a second. It, did Amanda Ann Moore come in? No. What about Molly Jung? LK okay. And Emily Sue? All right. You don't have a brother named Hunter, do you, Emily? You don't have a brother named Hunter, do you? No? Okay. There you go. There's your quiz back. And are you Miss Ricks? No. Are you in my 10 to 10 to 8 class? No, I switched back to this class. So oh, okay. Okay. What's your name? Oh, here you are. Here's your quiz back. We almost had everybody show up. All right, cool. Okay, now here we go. Let's talk about kinematic motion. There we go. Chapter 2, kinematics. It's the description of motion. It doesn't tell us how things got started, though. All right? What we're looking at when we, when we study kinematics is we don't care how that apple got started. We don't care about the forces that are working on it. All we're looking at is that it's in motion, okay? And for this chapter, all acceleration will be constant, okay? So, um, and that may mean absolutely nothing to you right now, all right? Okay, all right, but anyway, let's just take a look at this apple falling, all right? So he's got this apple, it's falling from here. To, it's gonna, he's gonna time it as it falls through 1.35 meters. He's got a clock, and so with that time, with the time, I'm just telling you where we're going, the big idea, where we're going with this. If, if you give me a time, and I know the acceleration, 
Here's a question for you. Is the apple, it's going to have an initial speed right here, correct? And it's going to have a speed right here. Is it going to be faster down here than it was up here? Will it be? I hope so. Otherwise, gravity stopped working. Okay, and we'd be in trouble. All of a sudden, we'd be floating around. Well, in some ways, it'd be kind of cool. No, it wouldn't. I don't know. Not living in oh, things can get messy in certain, well, well. But anyway, um, so it, it is going to be going faster. But if he knows that this is 1.35 meters and he actually gets a good time, he could figure out what the initial velocity was from that. He could find out what the final velocity is of that thing going through there. If we know the initial velocity and the final velocity, we can find the acceleration. And then we could find the time. Then we could find the distance. All kinds of, we're going to mix and mush a bunch of ideas together to, to be able to tell us, give us, to be able to quantify what's going on in the motion. All right? So there's the introduction. OK. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at distance and speed or scalar quantities displacement and velocity, which are one-dimensional vector quantities. One-dimensional meaning they're linear. They lie on the line. Okay. And then we'll talk about acceleration. And that's probably about as far as we'll go. And then on Thursday, we'll have all kinds of fun with kinematic equations and free fall. All right. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about distance and speed and scalar quantities. Scalar quantities, a scalar is just a number. Okay? That's what scalar means. It's just a number. It's a magnitude. It doesn't have, this is the thing it doesn't have, direction. Okay? I can't, all right, here's the difference between a speed and a velocity. Here's a speed. I was going 70 miles an hour on my motorcycle. Here's a, here's a velocity. I was going 70 miles an hour east on my motorcycle. Okay? You got to have a magnitude and a direction to be a vector. Um, but to be a scalar, it's just a number. There are certain things that are measured in scalar quantities. Mass, it's just a number. It's, it's just how much stuff I have. It's a mass. Temperature, doesn't have any direction to it, so that maybe it's warmer down south than it is up north. But other than that, temperature can be affected by where it is. but Basically, temperature is just a measurement. just doesn't have direction, OK? All right. Um, volumes, all, anything, all, most, most anything is a scalar. Uh, vectors are things like velocity and acceleration and displacement. Distance is a scalar. It's just a number. Case in point, I'm going to walk over here. I think we've measured this off before. It's about three meters. About an average play for the Chiefs offense. And then we're going to go back. Our, our little golf pro head coach is having some problems right now. The guy's never, the guy's never played one down of football in his life. Okay? And he's our head coach. It just bugs me. He's a golf pro, for crying out loud. Okay, make sure that doesn't get to spot eight or whatever, sports net eight or whatever. Anyway, because right, I don't want him sending bad people after me. But anyway, um, so I walk this way. OK, so I go three meters. Sorry, got off on Todd the Rod Haley there. Now I'm going to come back. And here we go. All right, that was three meters. Came back. What was the total distance? Six meters? Yeah. What was the displacement? Zero. Exactly. The displacement is zero. In other words, that, and that's the difference. Okay, so if I go from, here's State University, here's Podunk, all right, and here's my hometown. If I go in this circular route all the way around here like this, looks like I go 50 miles to get to State University, 30 miles to get to Podunk, because they sell, sell beer on Sunday, and then I come back 60 miles home, looks like I went 50, 30, that's 80, 140 miles total. But what was my displacement? Zero, okay? All right, now, here's the big, okay, so, so we got that idea down. Okay, let's say I'm riding my bike, and we're going to get this in miles per hour. 
we're going to get an average velocity. We're saying I'm riding my bike, and I'm a good bike. Let's say it's Lance Armstrong type caliber bike rider, right? And I do that in seven hours. I don't know. You could probably do it faster, but I know I couldn't sustain 20 miles an hour on a bike for, for seven hours. But anyway, all right. So, what's my miles per hour? I guess I just said it. When 140 miles in seven hours, what's my average speed? 20 miles an hour, right? 140 divided by 7 gives me 20 miles an hour. What's my average velocity? Here's a trick question that you may not know yet. What would be my average velocity? You don't know? No, you do know. You do know. I just haven't given you one piece of information yet. Remember, now here's the deal. Average velocity is total displacement divided by time. Okay? So the average velocity is the total displacement. So if I go from my hometown and go this circular route and come back, what was my total displacement? Zero. So what's my average velocity for that whole trip? Zero. Get the difference? My average speed was 20 miles an hour, but my average velocity was zero. And the reason it's zero was because I changed direction all over and came back. And you add up all the vectors, it add up to be zero. Okay? All right. In other words, here's the idea. Remember velocity, let's say it takes me um, two seconds to walk over those three meters. That would be about right. Or, or so, let's say five seconds. So it takes me about five seconds to walk over here the three meters. Okay? So... Um, three meters divided by f uh, five seconds, that's 0.6 meters per second in the positive x direction. Now I'm going to go 0.6 meters per second in the negative x direction. I add up my velocity vectors, what do I get? Zero. Okay. All right, so velocity is a vector, displacement or um, speed is a scalar. Okay, I think we beat that to death. All right, so here we go. Average speed. Notice they didn't put the V here, which I thought is very good. And in fact, they put an S with a bar over it, which is okay, but sometimes we use S for an actual distance, especially when we're looking at arcs. But there it is. Total distance traveled divided by total time traveled. Okay? So that's the average speed. Since distance is a scalar... Um, oh, by the way, those of you that might be trying to scribble real fast, these are available online, so you can, you can, so in other words, I kind of want you to just let it flow over you, so you're not wasting all your time scribbling, and, and you'll miss all these pearls of wisdom that I'm just throwing out here, a cyclical rate, right? So anyway, instantaneous speed is the speed measured over a very short time span. That's what your speedometer reads, okay? That's an instantaneous speed. In fact, that's getting into that C word for some of you that starts making your palms sweat and everything. It gets into the calculus of this whole thing. Okay? Um, so, all right. So this, okay, so here we go. A vector, a vector has both magnitude and direction. All right? And manipulating vectors means defining a coordinate axis system. Boy, that sounds complicated, but it's really not. Here's the deal. Whenever, let's say I've got vectors like this. I've got a vector going like this. I've got a vector going like this. I've got a vector going like this. And I've got one kind of going like this. Okay? I want to add them up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to put them I'm going to make this guy my first my initial one. I'm going to put the coordinate axis system there. And so I'll bring this guy and put him right here. Then I'll bring this guy and put him right there on my coordinate axis system. I'll bring this guy and put him right here. And then I add up the x and y components of them. We will get to that later. But then I can add them up, okay? Or I can do this. This is even more cool. All right? I can go Okay, I draw my first one. He goes like this. And then I can draw a new coordinate axis system right there. And draw in my second one. 
and he went like that, and then draw a new coordinate. But notice the coordinate axis system is always oriented the same way. I could have had it cattywampus if I wanted, but I had to leave it cattywampus each time I drew it. Okay? And then by the time you get done, you can draw your resultant vector. We'll get into that much later. That's in chapter three, much later, like next Tuesday. Okay? We'll talk more about that. But you needed to know that vectors have magnitude and direction. All right. Okay, here we go. We already talked about it. We talked about it. Okay, they actually have doubled the Chiefs offensive output here with eight meters. Okay, so this guy, now to get displacement, you take the final minus the initial, x2 minus x1. So this guy's displacement, if he goes to here, is going to be his final, 9 minus 1, and that'll be 8. Now what about the young lady he's running into here, who's coming out of the physics lab, of course, okay? Now what's, what's going to be her displacement when she gets to here? Negative 8. Negative 8. And that negative tells us the direction. She's going in the negative x-axis, okay? She's going in the negative direction. He's going in the positive direction, all right? And pretty soon, by chapter three, we'll, in chapter three, we'll start looking at the different angles, okay, and breaking it down into its X and Y components. How many of you have had trig? How many of you are terrified that you haven't had trig? Of course, no one's going to volunteer that, but anyway, don't worry. We do real, si it, it, not simple, but we do basic trig, triangular trig, and that's it for this class, so you'll be okay. All right. So then, when you get to the average velocity, which they draw this way, it's the displacement divided by the travel time. Okay? It's displacement divided by travel time. Good. So, if that one girl, notice, T2 minus T1 is always going to be what? What kind of number, positive or negative? Positive. Yeah, your change in time is always going to be positive because we can't go back in time, all right? You know, I don't care how many Star Trek adventures you watch. We do not go back in time because this is a whole... No, there's no laws in physics that say you can't, as a matter of fact. It's just that I think it violates our free will. But anyway, think about that for a while, all right? But... Anyway, um, for the most part, when 10 seconds elapses, you go 10 minus 0, so you get 10 seconds. So that'll be positive. But your x2 minus x1 might be negative, so sometimes you'll get a negative velocity. Okay? One is going, and that usually means it's going, cruising down the negative x-axis. Okay? All right. So let's do some, for motion in a straight line with no reversals, the average speed and the average velocity are the same. Otherwise, they are not. Indeed. The average velocity, oh boy, I should just read these. That would be fun. Uh, is, I think I have beat that idea into the ground. Good. All right. Now, remember back in your freshman algebra class when Miss Crunchmeister made you learn y equals mx plus b? Remember that? You're like, what the heck is all this about this y equals mx plus b? Well, we physics people are like, they should never teach them that. Uh, that's the math people. Well, I'm actually a math person too. But, um, but anyway, basically, what m is, the slope of your line, that's your velocity that you're going. That's your instantaneous velocity at a certain time. Okay? In other words, remember good old rise over run? We always put our change in position along the y-axis, which confuses people that get so used to our change in y over change in x. We actually do a change in x over change in t. Okay? So you get your rise over your run, and look what you get. Your slope. Your slope tells you what your um, your slope tells you what your uh, velocity is. Okay? It's a nice constant. But here the time is in hours. So, and no matter where I go, since it's a nice constant velocity, okay, 
since it's a nice constant velocity, no matter which two segments of distance that I go here, if I go from here to here or from here to here or even from here to here, if I go over here, the slope is still the same between those two points. Okay, it's nice constant velocity. Here's one where it's not constant. But we get the average velocity is the slope. Okay, this is the way this graph illustrates beautifully my wife and I going out to the Kansas City Rep or something like that. All right, and I'll explain this graph to you on why that's so. Here's what we do. We pull out of the garage and we're driving kind of slow. Well, we're actually sitting in the garage while I'm waiting for her, waiting for her. I'm coming, honey. I'm sure you are. So we're still waiting, but we haven't gone anywhere. Now, we start to leave. Where'd my, where'd my thing go? Okay, now we start to leave. So we come up here, start to go a little bit faster, and then all of a sudden we come to a stop sign. And she goes, do you remember the tickets? Oh, I forgot the tickets. So guess what we have to do? We turn around. Where's my little arrow? This is starting to make me mad. All right, so we turn around, and we come back. So we rush back home, but since we're in the subdivision, we don't want to run over anybody, all right, except for the mean kid, and he didn't have to be out, so the one that kicks the dog. So, wait, we're, so we get back home. I run inside, grab the tickets, and then we speed back up to UMKC to the theater, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this. Now, this is without, this is with different accelerations. This is a graph of your motion with different accelerations. Notice what kind of shapes we're getting. If I just showed you this shape, this right here in a math class, what kind of shape would you say that was? Starts with a P. It's a parabola, right? And it's got an X squared type. It's a quadratic type function, graph of a quadratic. This right here is a kind of a funny looking parabola and all that stuff. This shows us we do not have constant acceleration. This shows us that we have acceleration taking place in this thing. Okay. In other words, my velocities aren't staying the same. My velocity right here is what? Zero. Zero. My, my velocity here is real close to my velocity here, but what's the difference between them? This one's positive and this one's negative. So this one means I'm going home, or this one means I'm going back to where I started. And notice, its position is right back here, where you started from. Love is good. Love can be strong. We've got to get right back. Sorry. Anyway, um, isn't that an old Pointer Sisters song, I think? Somebody. All right. Now, and so here we stopped instantly at a stop sign, and then we sped up. And this velocity, this instantaneous right here, um, slope, so... How many of you took calculus in high school or have taken calculus in college? So when you found that slope of the tangent line, that's what you're doing. You're calculating the velocity. Here's the slope of the tangent line. You're count calculating that instantaneous velocity at that point. Okay. All right. So that's what that looks like. All right. This is a good time. Now what I'd like for you to do is get out a sheet of paper, but it's only going to take you like a half a sheet. So we want to be kind of environmentally friendly. If you want to share a half sheet with somebody and stuff like that, you can. The only reason I thought of that was because when I gave this quiz to my earlier afternoon class, somebody put on there a waste of paper real big. I was like, well, all right. You shouldn't do that. with. You shouldn't make snide comments if your name's on it. Anyway, guy needed thug lessons. All right. Now. But he, but, but, he, but he did make a, actually a pretty good point. All right, so here we go. Here comes the quiz. Item library. Kinematics. Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. Oh, by the way, your second homework assignment is like these type of problems right here, these STP, which self to tutoring problems, all right? And this, I don't know what this means. But anyway, this means it's supposed to take like 20 minutes to do. I picked ones that took three. You got like five of them, and they just like one, three, seven, 11. So I added it up as like 33 minutes. 
and they're, they're not bad. But here's your quiz. This one's going to be your quiz right here. Here we go. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, man. Just <laughs> click. Ah. <laughs> I already did this. We're done. We're done. No, uh, let, no let's try this one. No, we can't do that. You've got to have the same one. Okay. Do, oh, I know what to do. Well, I fix this problem. Okay. Technical difficulty. This is the first time I've tried doing it. Isn't there any way to clear this? Ah. Uh, one second, because we might go to the different one. Okay, here we go. We can use this one then. Let me turn it back on. It's the same one. Difficulty is level one, just like the other one. Okay, so you got a part A and part B on this one. All right. Oh, no. Sometimes when you turn this off, it's hard to turn it back on. Come on. Come on now. I used to have a meter stick in here so I could punch that button. Because if you keep doing this, what I'm always afraid I'm doing is I'm just turning it off. Okay. Wait one. You guys just have two questions. Okay. All right. Now this one's kind of tricky. Think about this for a minute. It says, "What is the magnitude?" Now remember, of the displacement of a car that travels half a lap along a circle that has a radius of 280 meters. What's its displacement? Displacement is the straight line distance. So think about that for a minute. You can work together. Just, in other words, this is kind of like coffee clats, you know. It's like, Rhode I I'll give you a topic. Rhode Island. It's not a road. It's not an island. Discuss. This thing. Go ahead. Discuss. That thing. Draw a picture if you need to. What's a guess? Anybody got a guess? 1,759. How did you get that? How did you how did you do that? How did you do, get how did you get that? What did you do? Figured out half of the circumference. Half the circumference. What's the circumference of the circle? Oh, oh, you got to multiply by pi. But I don't think that's necessary. Uh, I feel like 
560. You put 560. It's just the displacement. Yeah, it's just the displacement. In other words, it's the diameter of that circle. Think about it. Here's, here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. I'm going to draw it over here. Kick me that. Oh, I got it. Thanks. See what I, remember displacement is the shortest it's that straight line straight line distance okay it's the displacement all right so so here's the deal this got you to think so those of you who th yes Sergio right yeah yeah so this point will be like the point a to point yes as the crow flies as we say displacement is your as the crow flies distance that's not in a physics book anywhere, but that's the, that's the idea, okay? So here we go. At least I hope, boy, I've made a big deal about it. Let's see. Sir, what about the, uh, the math when we're going back to, the, back to university and it's the total distance traveled, and it's, even, it's not in a straight line, but it's assumed that it is in a straight line? Oh, yeah, that's why they didn't talk about displacement on that one at all. Oh, okay. Because displacement gets very tricky when you do this, the displacement, as I went from here, you know, this is, you ask a 12-year-old boy to go pick up something for you, here's what he does. Uh, de -de 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 -de. Ooh, girl. Okay, and then he comes back down here. All right? You ask someone old like me to go get something, we're going to go straight there. We're going to displace directly. All right? So, here's the deal. Head, you're right here, and we've got a radius of 280 meters. Right? Isn't that what it says? Yeah. All right. So when I go halfway around as the crow flies, it's 560. Okay? I hope that's right. If it's not, then I'm going to dismiss class for the rest of the semester and everybody gets an A. Are you sure you want to show the answer? Yeah, I'm scared to death, but go ahead. 560. Oh, Good. I was actually very scared because, you know, you say something stupid, you got to let, you got to live up to it. All right. Answer requested. 560. All right. Now, how about when the car travels a full lap? Full lap. What is the displacement? Zero. Show answer. Are you sure? Yes. Zero. Exactly. Okay, now I got a question for you. Let's say let's say that it took the car 56 seconds to get halfway around. All right? It's a little go-kart, I guess. It took 56 seconds. What's its is there a difference now between its average velocity and its average speed? Huge difference. Right? Because its average velocity would be the displacement divided by the time. Its average velocity would be 10 meters per second. Right? But its average um, speed would be the 560 times pi, which is uh, when he got the 1700 something, 1700 divided by 56. Right? And that's quite a bit faster. You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. so, so the average velocity would be much smaller. Because once he completes the trip, what's his average velocity? Zero. Right? Okay. Good. All right. So we'll collect those. We'll go ahead and collect those real quick. This class, it's easy to collect them. The afternoon class is insane with 133 of them in there. All right. There we go. And, and by Thursday, see, then I'll know everybody's name when I return these things. Okay, so we're up to quiz two. And everybody's smoking, doing good. Oh, that's not it. That's your old quiz. Have we got everybody? All right, we're all, we're all, ooh, that's going to be ugly for the folks at home. All right. Okay. 
Let's talk a little bit about acceleration, and then it's so it's such a nice evening. Let's like at about six thirty-one. I'll let's you know, as they say in the medical dramas, call it. All right. Anyway. All right. Here we go. And then that way I can answer questions. I justify it by answering questions. But we've flown through chapter two here. It's flown through it. All right. Kinematics. Here we go. Some more stuff. Acceleration. For the most part in this course, until we get to springs, and, and we're only going to touch on springs for a little bit, we'll always have constant acceleration. Okay? Or no acceleration. Okay? Or zero. It'll, but it'll either be constant or zero. As a matter of fact, I say this every semester to my students. Then I tell them I'm not serious about it. But if you want to, you can go to Freaks, which is like at 41st and Troost. It's a tattoo parlor. And you can get zero acceleration means constant velocity tattooed to your arm. All right? and, and you'll have the essence of the first six chapters of Physics one, all right. Basically, zero acceleration means constant velocity. Okay, I'm standing still for once in my life, right? I have no, I have zero velocity, but it's constant, isn't it? Am I accelerating? No. Now some people might say yes, you are because you're on the Earth and it's zipping about the sun, and that's. Eh. In this reference frame of this room, I am not accelerating, and I have a constant velocity, all right. But acceleration is basically this. It's your change in velocity over your change in time. So if I have, if I'm going 10 meters per second, and then five seconds later I'm going 10 meters per second, remember change is V2 minus V1. That'd be zero. And so I've got zero acceleration. All right? Um, acceleration is the rate of change of your velocity. How many of you have had physics in high school? Okay, a few of you. All right, you all can't answer this. Some of you might know this. What is the acceleration due to gravity? What's the number? Anybody know? What? 9.8. Yes, 9.8 meters per second per second. Okay, or 9.8 meters per second squared. In other words, so let's think about that. So the acceleration due to gravity. Let's just look at the scalar quantity of it. Okay, I don't want to put it. I don't want to put a direction on it quite yet. All right. Um, okay, let's make it negative because it's going radially, radially inward towards the center of the Earth. Yes, it is negative. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I left all my markers over here once again. Now I can't find any of them. Oh, here, they, here we go. All right. So here's what we do. Good. All right. Let's say, let's say we're that apple. Remember that apple that was falling at the very beginning? Let's say it was falling at 1.35 meters. And right here it was at, uh, well, let's not worry about the distance. Right here it's at zero. Its velocity is equal to zero. Okay. It falls for one second. Now think about what nine, the acceleration due to gravity, and since I'm going to, this is kind of being a smart aleck based on the very good input that I got. Isn't it negative? Yes, it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient my whole axis to make, make this be the positive x. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the negative part of the gravity. So it's 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, starts off at zero. After one second, how fast will it be going? Exactly. It'll be going 9.8 meters per second. Okay, because here's the deal. If A is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time, okay, where my initial velocity was zero, all right, then I've got A is equal to. Um, 9.8, which equals V minus 0 over um, 1 second, which is 1 minus 0. So I multiply that by 1, I get 9.8 meters per second is equal to the velocity. Now, 
That's the algebraic way to do it. I, I really kind of wanted the conceptual way, which is what I got for that answer, because he went, oh, if it's, it's going to gain 9.8 meters per second of speed for every second it's falling, after one second, it'll be going 9.8 meters per second. After two seconds, how fast will it be falling? 19.6. And then after three seconds, around 30. Because <laughs> now it's not, I can't do it anymore. Okay. All right. It's like, what, 29.7, I think? Isn't that 9.8? No. 29.4? Okay. Around 30. Okay. Um, do I have any nurses in this class? A lot of times I have a nurse. And when I do my rounding, they get upset because they're like, people die if you don't get it exact. I'm like, well, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't work in an ER. Chill. All right. Anyway, um, so after once, so let's take a simpler example. Let's take, um, oh, since we're on it right now, we're, we're going to drop this thing at 9.8 meters per second, per second. What happens if I drop, oh, let's say something that's pretty aerodynamic because we're going to, oh, by the way, we always, when we do our models, we always, our physical models, we do pretty simplistic ones. We neglect air resistance, which is very important if you're an engineer designing automobiles and things like that, um, or airplanes, because that's the whole reason airplanes fly is due to air resistance and, and um, uh, the forces that um, act on the wings. But, uh, and a little Bernoulli principle. But anyway, um, so we're going to neglect air resistance. Let's say I have a BB and a bowling ball. I'm going to drop them at the same time from the same height. Which one's going to hit first? Are they going to hit at the same time? Yes. Yes, they are. Why? Because the only thing accelerating them, for some reason, that one causes people problems. It caused Aristotle all kinds of problems. Okay, to where he almost threw up his hands with science completely. All right, and it really wasn't until Galileo said, hey, it makes sense, and I've got the experiments to prove it, um, that they're going to hit the same. Why? Because they are experiencing the same acceleration. It'd be no different if I had a bicycle next to a Corvette, okay, and they're going to speed along. If I told the Corvette you can only accelerate as fast as the bike, and they're going to go 30 meters, What's going to happen? They're going to cross the 30 meters at the same time, right? So the same thing with the pebble and the BB, just get, or, or and the bowling ball and the BB, right? But the thing is, and we'll learn in chapter four, the question, the big question is, which one do you want to have hit you, the bowling ball or the BB? Okay, all right. So it, well, I guess it depends on your life situation. But anyway, all right. Yes. Oh, yeah, well, what we would do is we'd, we, um, we would mean their same height. Yeah, we'd set them. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Now you're thinking. You're thinking like if you go, okay, well, to do this. In fact, there's a cool thing. I don't have the YouTube thing. I'm going to have it hooked up Thursday. There's a cool one where the Apollo 14 astronauts um, are actually on the moon, and they do the, the classic hammer and a feather experiment. And they can do it on the moon because the moon's a vacuum. All right. The reason I didn't use a hammer and a feather here on Earth is because there's so much air resistance and all kinds of things that makes a feather float. Okay. And as a matter of fact, for added edification, anybody done any parachuting here? Any parachutists? Okay. I did. I did it. I got attached to the Army and did my five jumps, training jumps. But anyway, I said, never again. You don't need to do that anymore. Um, Jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, only the Army would think of that. But anyway, uh, here, uh, here's the deal. If you fall, eventually, because of air resistance, if you fall, so if you're at this, so you're falling, and after 10 seconds, I, I need to give you some, some um, ideas of what we mean by meters per second here. After 10 seconds, you would be going, what, 98 meters per second? Wow. After 20 seconds, you're going almost 200 meters per second. All right. Now, to get a perspective of that, 
of what you're saying, a Zach Granke 96 mile an hour fastball is about 45 meters per second. Okay? It's right around there. Um, 60 miles an hour is right around 24 meters per second. All right? So if you're going 200, all right, that's about that's about four times what we said the Zach Greinke fastball was. So that's almost 400 miles an hour. You don't get going that fast. Because here's what happens. As you're falling, all these air molecules start collecting up underneath you as you're falling. And eventually, you get to a place where your acceleration stops. It has the, the forces are equal pushing up as going down. And so you've got zero acceleration. And that's at a certain velocity. And that's called the terminal velocity. Have you ever heard that before? That's what happens is air collects up underneath a falling object. And eventually, the force is then balanced. And so you have no acceleration, but you have a constant velocity. OK. Yes? Any idea what that is? About 120. About 120 miles an hour. Yeah. So that's right around, what, 60 meters per second, something like that. So after about five, five to six seconds, it's pretty good. Yeah, after five seconds in the air is a long time if you're falling. <laughs> Trust me. It's like, oh my. I've been falling a long time. Like, in, you know, let it be on, but after five seconds. And then finally you get that, <laughs> okay. All right, anyway. Okay, last thing on acceleration, because I said I'd let you out here at 6.31. I'm, so I'm announcing to the world that we don't go the full time around here. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you've got acceleration. What it does is it means that the speed of an object is changing, or its direction is, or both. Okay, so that means we can have a constant speed around the circle. We can be going around the circle at 20 meters per second at a constant speed, but your velocity is always changing because your, because your direction is changing the entire time. And that's when we talk about centripetal acceleration. That's that acceleration that is pulling you towards the center of the circle, okay? And your body's resisting it by pulling this way. That's why when you're learning to drive like I did in the big old, your dad's 1967 Mercury Monterey, this thing was huge. I mean, it was a true battleship. This great white car, sharp, sucked up Toyotas in its fender wells and everything as it rode by. You'd hit a corner pretty fast, and all your buddies in those leather seats, they go sliding, careening onto the other, um, across the car. But anyway, um, so if you change direction, that's an acceleration change. Um, now, here's the last conceptual question. Can you have negative acceleration and positive velocity going on at the same time? Yes, you can. Just think about if, you, if that wasn't true. If all of a sudden you started to have a negative acceleration, we'd be dropping transmissions all over the place out there. Every time you put on your brakes, your car would turn around and go the other way. All right? And that's not going to happen. All right, so yeah, that's part of the slowing down process. All right, I think you got the big picture. And so we'll get into the equations on Thursday. Job well done. Job well done.